it's November 9th. And the first thing we have to do is approve the agenda for today. So if everyone can take a look at what Mike sent around. So I, I had a question. I thought this was going to be a hearing on the change we made last time. Is that happening later? Was I off on the timing there? That's, uh, that's going to require a 30 day notice. So I have to prepare all of the physical documents and send those off to various agencies. So our goal is to hopefully get it in December for the public hearing. It'll, it'll take a little bit of time. Okay. Got it. Thanks. That's helpful. So the next step, Mike, is, is for you to develop, draft the wording or follow up with the wording. Yeah, most of it I have done already. Um, we're just checking on a few other um, items in house. There were some things that people have mentioned um, that they wanted addressed. So sometimes when it's open, we'll we'll add a couple of, of tweaks here and there for other other minor things. Um, there was a mapping error on the design review district when we adopted that. Actually, the map removed uh, two properties or three properties that it shouldn't have on Terra Street. It was only supposed to remove two, but when CVRPC did the map, they removed five. So we've got to put three of them back in. So I've, I've got a couple of those that I just have to coordinate with the Regional Planning Commission to get a draft map so I can include it in the packet and those types of more cleanup things that aren't necessarily policy things. That's why we didn't really go over them because they're more cleanup items. Good. Yeah. I'll move to approve the agenda. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, so we have a motion from Barb and a second from Stephanie. All in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. 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 Okay, I saw some mouths there. Any uh, opposed? Did John okay. vote? He, said, he either yawned or said I. Um, I might have been. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> uh, all right. So it looks like we're we're approved. The agenda is approved, and we will proceed. Uh, the next thing is the comments from the chair. Uh, I've got nothing new for anybody. Um, it looks like everything was handled well last week in my absence. So apologize for not being able to make it. Uh, just so that. Uh, I'm totally up to speed. It looks like uh, for the purposes of the PUD requirements, we removed uh, the riverfront. The, yes, the river, the riverfront area uh, from those requirements, and that was the change. Is that correct? Yeah. And we cleaned up that section, right, Mike? Because there was there was something about an urban center district in there too. Yeah, so there was a, we, we replaced what had said urban center with riverfront. So that cleaned up, that kind of killed two birds with one stone and then removed the last couple of words off of that. Entirely in the uh, rural district. Or the entirety in, yeah, in the rural district, so. Okay, and we just, we just made the change to the new neighborhood PUD. We did not change the conservation PUD. Is that right? Correct. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, that's all I've got. Um, so the next on our agenda is general business. Uh, do we have anyone from the public that would like to discuss something other than the transportation plan? Anyone can bring up anything other than the transportation plan if they'd like. All righty. So with that, we'll move on. Uh, we have to consider the minutes from last time, so everyone can take a look. Mike, I had a question about the new wording in the last paragraph on the first page, um, where we have the new wording said it would be required for any development of either 40 parcels or dwelling units. In, in the existing wording says lots. Do you want that to say parcels or lots? Does it say lots in there? 
It's no, it says lots in the ordinance. I I'm think. surprised. And you thought back. you got them all out, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we. It goes back to our old thing of uh, when you say it, use one thing and not two. Maybe but, I missed. One. Yeah, I was surprised to see it there, but it's. It looks like it's um, thirty four oh four B two. Unless I didn't. I have no, the final it, draft. Yeah, in my in my version, it does say the word parcels. Oh, okay. Because I thought I had the final draft, 1 3 2 2018. All right. Makes me. Yeah, you'll have to download a new new version. Okay. Well, but in the first paragraph, of, no, in the first sentence required for any development of either 40 lots or dwelling units, and then goes on to say parcels on a parcel that is 10 acres or larger. So that's not what yours says. No, oh, that's not what my version says in my so, official. All right, so, okay. So that was cleaned up at some point. Yeah, you must be looking at a at a at an almost complete draft. It says not, final, but not it's not final. final. <laughs> <laughs> well, it may have been final draft, but that may not have been what was finally adopted. I see. Just one other quick thing on the uh, minutes on that changed wording, the new wording. Um, at the end of that, it says not located in the Riverfront District. Shouldn't Riverfront be capitalized and uh, close parenthesis, uh, close quotation on that? Yes, for, for that, I can make that change. Okay, great. That's all I have. All right. Uh, so do we have a motion to approve the minutes with uh, Barb's changes? I move to approve the minutes. Okay. Second. Move. Motion from Aaron and second from, we'll give it to John. <laughs> I thought it was Marcella. <laughs> was it Marcella? <laughs> no, it was Aaron, right? The motion? Yeah, it was Aaron. Uh -huh. I was just realizing my screen isn't showing everybody, so I was confused for a second. <laughs> well, we're not seeing Ariane, right, at all. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, she's just on my second screen. Still finishing yeah. dinner. Yeah. Did she she so, all right. Okay. Uh, so, those in uh, favor of approving the minutes with those changes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion to approve. Uh, and that brings us to the transportation plan. Um, and I'm still catching up. So, I mean, I'll hand it over maybe to Mike to give us a refresher of where we were at. And then, um, of course, the members of the transportation plan who are here, um, if you, if you feel a need to uh, explain anything or to, to interject, please feel free to do so. Um, so with that, I'll just hand over to Mike for now. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have a lot to add from last time. So last time we just kind of did a, a uh, an overview of what um, you, the Planning Commission, had received from the Transportation Committee um, just reviewing a few of the things that are a little bit different in form and format um, from what you typically have seen um, with the fact that they, they have some sub goals in there. So we talked about that. We talked a little bit about some of the um, the aspirations at the last meeting. You know, there was a conversation about what um, the, what we felt, whether, you know, as staff and Hanif commented as, on what the Transportation Committee felt was kind of their, the primary kind of message that they, that 
the commission, the, the transportation committee was trying to get across. And, you know, I'd mentioned that I felt that it was really um, kind of getting down to that concept of being easy to live in Montpelier without a car. And that was really, you know, if there was one single thing that it kind of focused on, it was really to, to, to start to balance the scales. So that way we were looking at um, all the transportation options on an equal footing. So it's not cars and then sidewalks and bike paths as an afterthought. All three of those um, and, and whatever else, uh, what other, whatever else transportation options we have should all be treated on equal footing because um, uh, you know that's that, that's really the the future of what we need to do to get our complete streets is really to to rebalance how we prioritize our infrastructure investments. So I think that was where that conversation came out. Um, and uh, Hanif had introduced and presented some of his. Um, worksheets that he had. These were Excel sheets and I forwarded them to the Planning Commission um, at, after the last meeting. So you guys have had an opportunity to, to see them and hopefully you had a chance to kind of look through what, what they did and how they prioritized. Um, and typically as, as you know, Planning Commissioners, you guys know, we were just prioritizing the strategies, which is why what you received from me really just has the prior priorities in those strategies. But um, Hanif felt it was, it, it was important for you guys to take a look at the fact that they had prioritized um, the aspirations, the goals, and the sub goals, and the strategies. And really, so that way you guys understood kind of the context, um, you know, because we're going to have to make some adjustments to this plan to match the other plans. We want to make sure that you guys are fully understanding what the thought process that the transportation went through to get to what you have in front of you. So that was a little bit of um, a little bit of a, a quick summary, I guess. And I don't know if we want to kind of open up to the planning commission to see if you guys have questions or if the transportation committee wants to comment further on on a little bit of the background. So, so Mike, had, had we walked through the plan last time? We walked through the entire thing. Not, not in all the details. We, um, you know, we we obviously spent some time getting through the the zoning proposal, so that took a portion of the time, and then we just kind of went through this broad, big picture, fifty thousand foot. You know, let's touch on some things, but we didn't go. Um, goal by goal or strategy by strategy through this. Um, we kind of took that 50,000 foot view and kind of decided we would um, move those priorities, the, the, that Excel table out to everybody. So everybody kind of had an understanding and kind of left it to this meeting to start digging into those um, questions of, of, you know, whether we need to make adjustments to the aspirations or goals or strategies and start to have that conversation now. Okay. So yeah, before, so, so I imagine we're, we need to do a walkthrough tonight then. And uh, before we, before we do the walkthrough, does the transportation committee have anything uh, to talk to us about before we get going? Um, or would you prefer to just talk as we go? Uh, Dayton. Yeah. Hi, I just want to do a brief introduction of myself and, and uh, why I'm here because I think where I'm, next to the transportation committee. Um, I'm here representing the complete Montpelier Complete Streets Committee, um, for which I recently started acting as chair. And uh, we're, Hanif is acting kind of as a liaison between MTIC and our committee. And if it's a value tonight, I don't need to take valuable time uh, more than saying it's available, uh, but we've had eight uh, Complete Streets members weigh in and kind of provide their ranking of uh, the goals and sub goals similar to what the transportation committee has already provided. So if that's worth discussing, I'm here to provide it. Um, otherwise, I'm happy to sit and, and learn kind of the walkthrough of the transportation plan because I'm relatively new to reviewing it beyond these goals and sub goals as well. But that's why I'm here. And hi. Uh, yeah. Hi. Thank you. Welcome. And I think we would love to hear uh, what the priorities of the Complete Streets Committee uh, okay. you know, how they thought about it. So maybe, maybe um, after after we go through it maybe um sure yeah whatever's whatever's good timing let us know that way that the planning commission will actually know what you're talking about if, after we get through it 
Um, okay, so Constantinos or Elizabeth, do you have anything to add before we start walking through this? Elizabeth? You're unmuted, but we can't hear you. <sighs> Yes. A little. I have, I have a new computer and it's just quirky as hell. Um, anyway, I'm really happy to be here this evening. I think um, Mike, I feel that his overview um, was very, um, was very good. Um, you know, I, I, um, I've been talking a little bit with various members of the Planning Commission and, um, and you know, Denise and I started uh, uh, writing this and then, um, and Steve Favell worked with us, and then we worked with Mike, and then we worked together, and then we worked with Mike, and then, you know, worked with the team, yet meanwhile, all through it. Um, you know, I think it's a, sometimes a little bit challenging to understand our three high-level, um, what are they called, Mike? Oh, my God. Uh, aspirations. And, uh, you know, I think it's a little confusing sometimes to people, but... Um, in the first set of aspirations, in the first aspiration, we work on, um, you know, some of the different modalities uh, that are not car related. Um, in the second aspiration, um, and, and Constantinos, can you give some more specifics? I have to say that I, unfortunately, due to family issues, have been out of the loop for two months, but I'm happy to be back in. Um, can you give the um, more specific um, uh, nuances of what the first aspiration was versus the second aspiration. Um, and I'm going to just say that the third aspiration was very important to M6, which was the energy aspect. And so we fully well expect that you're going to integrate that into your energy plan or integrate somehow those two together. So um, I just wanted to say that much. And I hear, um, as an original author, uh, we use Jeff Speck's book and we really tried to integrate as much as we can. And um, also, as a full disclosure, I work for Sustainable Montana Coalition, and um, we're very excited about uh, what used to be called On Demand Microtransit, which is now My Ride GMT. And so um, promoting that and part of the uh, transportation plan is hugely important uh, to all of us as well. Okay, yes, thanks, Elizabeth. Uh, looks like Barb has something. Yeah, I just wanted to ask Dayton or maybe the rest of the committee too, in terms of, um, am I right in understanding that the complete streets recommendations are all blended into this chapter? Is that right? Or are you anticipating having a different section? I don't anticipate having a different section, I believe, and, and members of the MSA can correct me here because I'm, I'm relatively new to this uh, process. I believe we've taken what MTIC has done and what has come up with these uh, goals and sub-rules, we've simply reviewed them from, from a group of advocates that live in Montpelier and said, we believe these are the most important, right? So we basically got 10 votes to review, oh, I'm looking up, I think 35 goals or sub-goals, um, and we've ranked those. And that's kind of what we have the results of. So sort of a prioritization. So there wasn't anything in there or missing then or anything you that complete streets felt needed to be added? No, certainly I'll, I'll only speak for myself and saying I, it looked like a very thorough review and we did not have discussion saying, why didn't they put hoverboards in there? I mean, I thought about it, but we didn't take anyone's time. That's, that's the next round. So no, it was very thorough. So it was just, just prioritization. Great. Um, so, Constantinos, did you have anything to say, or would you like to just hold off for later? Uh, yeah, I'd just like to mention that uh, Hanif, who actually is on both Complete Streets and MTIC, uh, was kind of like a uh, liaison between the two, and we did get input from Complete Streets at, at the beginning of the process, and we did ask for, for comments and quotes, so that was uh, part of our uh, deliberations, and especially uh, since Elizabeth was on that working group that put together uh, the draft uh, plan that we reviewed as a committee, I think, of, um, along with Hanif, a, a lot of what Complete Streets was talking about, I think, should have, or should have been represented. Um, and as Elizabeth said, I think um, the aspirations, uh, and what Mike said last time was that I think the, the main goal uh, is having a Montpelier where people don't need a car. Um, 
to get around, that you could live here, work, do whatever you need without a car. I think that's basically what the committee all agreed on as being the, the final goal and the aspirations and strategies and goals kind of flowed through that original like top level idea. Sorry. Okay, that's great. Uh, well, if, oh, uh, Barb, you have something? Yeah, just a quick clarification since we've got members of the committee here. Um, so I think, you know, we sort of got the idea that that was your overall goal, but people could live in Montpelier without a car. Um, tied into that, do you have specific goals about reducing the number of vehicles or potentially reducing the amount of parking downtown? Um, um, because those are sort of tied in, in my mind, to the idea of not needing a car. Well, we didn't discuss like specifically, you know, we want to reduce the number of cars by X amount or X percentage, but the idea and what we were talking about was that you would, there would be reduced demand for parking. And there was discussion on, uh, you know, by enacting a lot of these strategies, there can be changes in land use. Uh, and we didn't talk about this specifically because there's a lot of different opinions in the committee. We are, <laughs> we were a pretty diverse group and uh, what the final product you have is actually a compromise of a lot of different opinions uh, and thoughts that we had, especially on the funding side and some of the strategies. So. Um, I think the, the goal was, again, you know, reduce the number of cars by having people not need them. Uh, and to that, I mean, like Elizabeth said, coupling it with the energy plan, reducing emissions by having less cars, and then um, the land use piece of it would follow from that. Uh, but we didn't come up with any specific things. And it sounds like, Elizabeth, you have something to add? You're muted. Here we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Barely. Barely. Uh, yeah, too low. Yeah, I'll speak up. I'll belt it out. Um, <laughs> and so, um, you know, there were a number of strategies with regard to moving people throughout Montpelier without cars. Satellite parking, bringing people in from satellite parking, uh, you know, using some sort of transit system, uh, increasing the north-south bike access, among others. Um, you know, encouraging walking, uh, potentially having a parking structure, uh, not necessarily the current parking structure. You know, we wanted to have more open, but then that kind of, that was one of the sources of contention. Um, and freeing up the streets uh, to make it more um, attractive to be doing the walking and biking we're talking about. Um, once again, we, I don't know if you're all familiar with um, Jeff Speck's work. Uh, however, he did a lot of work on walkable cities, and uh, some of his criteria is that it must be beautiful to walk to, it must be interesting, um, it must be safe, uh, you know, so we're, we were really looking at those as the underpinnings of all these different things. But satellite parking being, you know, a, a, another big issue. So we didn't get numbers per se. I appreciate the concept of numbers. I don't know how that would be measurable now. We are talking... Um, with the launch of my ride about trying to do a measure of current parking, but we're in COVID. So we're just like parking is just a strange thing now. Um, anyway, enough said. I guess I would just comment that uh, th this is the most, or um, definitely was the most diverse committee that I've worked with so far. Um, usually when you talk about, say, the, the energy or historic preservation or um, the, any of the other ones that, I've, that we've worked on, the, the committees were pretty uniform in their direction. And, uh, and one of the reasons the transportation plan took so long is that there really was a diversity of, of opinion of how progressive or not um, we wanted to push the envelope or they wanted to push the envelope um, on issues. So I think Constantinos is right when he says this, this really is a compromise here. There were certainly people who felt um, we should be putting out a plan that says, you know, no cars or, or, or much reduced cars in the downtown and others that said, you know, let's, let's aspire to, to being able to have a community that you don't need to have a car, but that doesn't necessarily mean nobody's allowed to have cars, you know, kind of understanding that subtle difference between, um, you know, people can have cars and people are probably going to have cars and 
you know, are we building a future towards electric cars or no cars? Um, and I think that was a debate they, they had amongst themselves. And, and this is very much kind of the, the compromise that they came down on. And I thought, you know, it's a testament to them because this was, you know, a lot of people with a lot of opinions um, and many very heartfelt opinions. And I, I think it was, it was good that they, you know, they all gave their, their views and they really kind of all also were willing to come to a point where they, they understood this was, this was the compromise that they were going to get, um, that, that they were going to get to, if they were going to agree to something, this was where they got to. So I thought, you know, hats off to them. It was a great job um, being able to work through um, it certainly was a lot easier to work through, you know, historic preservation or energy when everybody's on the exact same page of where 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 the end game is. Um, and I think this was a little bit more difficult of a chapter to work through. Um, so, okay, well, yeah, um, thanks for all the background. Uh, so, uh, what do you guys think? Should we just dive in here and? Can we ask uh, Dayton to just give us an idea of what the complete streets priorities were? Because we have, we did hear last time from MTIC on terms of what their priorities were. I think yeah. he's talking about specific um, aspirations and things is my understanding. So I was hoping- well, Within the plan, you know, what was important for complete streets within the plan? That was my understanding. Yes, Dayton or no? So, yeah, I think goals. I mean, I can walk people through and you know share my screen and walk people through in uh, two minutes. Just kind of what the top you know five were from our group, if that's if that's valuable. And I can wait to do it after we do a plan walkthrough as well. I think one way where we could accomplish a number of these things is using the spreadsheet that was sent to us, which I think actually has the um, votes from complete streets parsed out as well as the uh, transportation committee. And uh, while I think I understand um, everything in this spreadsheet, I don't want to assume that I do. So maybe if we could use the spreadsheet as our way to walk through and get an explanation of how, um, what the different numbers uh, represent in terms of votes and, and an explanation of how, um, how this works, which and thank you, by the way, I appreciate it being sent in spreadsheet format, which was so helpful. So John, are you saying that you, that your preference is to look at this, is to, to kind of explore this through the spreadsheet rather than the draft chapter? That would be my preference. Okay. Uh, how do other people feel, other planning commission members feel about that? Do you feel like you need to, ex to look at the chapter? Okay. Stephanie seems to be like, like the spreadsheet idea. Barb seems like the spreadsheet idea. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with spreadsheet, especially because that's kind of how we, the direction we want to go anyways. Alrighty. Then, uh, let's, uh, I think, okay, we should walk through the spreadsheet then. I think, um, I, I still think it's a better idea for us to actually know what's on the spreadsheet before we hear from Dayton. I think that it will, it will, I think it, his comments will be received at a higher quality from us if we are already acquainted with it, if that's okay. Well, it might not be necessary then if, if it's already reflected in the spreadsheet. It's, um, not, it's not, he's he's introducing new information to a different group of people. The spreadsheet was uh, from the transportation committee as I understand it. And so Dayton's will be talking about the priorities of the complete streets group, which, so I, I can only assume that there'll be some differences in how they would rank things. Okay, that wasn't my understanding. Was was that a correct synopsis, Dayton? Yeah, and I I don't know. I'm not the spreadsheet master. I think that might be Hanif, but the I know that we sent the complete streets comments to Mike this morning, um, so that those can at least get out if they're not in your current spreadsheet. But I think it's a prudent move to go through some existing data first rather than have me yeah. talk up front. Okay. So let's go through the spreadsheet that was prepared by Hanif. Uh, and uh, who's the most appropriate person for that? Would Mike or would it be Cosentinos? Well, can Mike share the, can you share the spreadsheet? He's, as he, we go through it? 
He emailed it. Well, yeah, yeah. He could show, no, I know, but wait, as we go through it, we're going to want to see it on the screen. Sure. Yeah, I'm trying to track it down real quick. I think Mike Mike has this spreadsheet. He's just figuring out how to share a screen, I think. So everyone knows what's going on. Just what we have a second. We there is a transportation little sub working group too, right? Yeah, I was going to ask about that. We haven't met yet, um, but we were, because we wanted to wait to hear what the Planning Commission, or at least I wanted to hear what the Planning Commission had to say about the whole plan beforehand. So, yeah, um, I think it's uh, it's Aaron, Ariane, and myself. Okay, great, thanks. Mike, if you're looking for the spreadsheet, John shared the link in the chat. All right. Now I just need to go back here. Go to here. Go to. Share my screen. All right. How's that? Awesome. All right. Okay. So I don't know if mine has, oh, yep. Complete streets count and MTIC count. So when you're looking, uh, the totals are here on the left side, those three blue columns. So if you're working your way through it, there are a couple of, of things. The votes are kind of over here in blue. The reference refers to, um, Aspiration A, Goal 2, um, and then they lettered some of the ones underneath it, A, um, you know, uh, for the sub-goal A, um, and so that was how they, they set the reference up, just so you kind of get a sense of what this is, and that's what these goals are all the way down running through. On the bottom tabs, you have the, the various you know, ranking of goals. Um, this is the master table, ranking of goals, ranking of sub goals, and then ranking of strategies. So they went through and ranked each one. Um, so it looks like, yeah, it looks like uh, there are complete streets ones for goals and sub goals. So that gives you a little bit of an idea um of where these were so they they did a very complete i mean you can see there are a lot of a lot of these sub goals some of them didn't receive any um votes but that's just everybody had a certain number of votes and they tallied them up and this was you know so you can get an idea of which one had more and less votes i think the front is where they all got compiled together if i understood this correctly so pulling those all together, this is where you ended up with. So, um, and again, um, you know, they're, they're the top, the top goals were, you know, biking in Montpelier will be safer, walking in Montpelier will be safer, and the transportation system will contribute to a vital um, and lively community were the three top goals. But you can see there are a number, actually the top six or seven here all received at least 10 votes. Um, mostly coming in with uh, themes around uh, safety, um, safe, easier, efficient, um, and then the environmentally um, sustainable goal also landed in the, that top seven as well, which deals with having, um, dealing with um, the climate impacts of our transportation system is part of that, and also items like uh, stormwater runoff and those 
um, water quality impacts are another part of that same goal. So, um, so I guess that's, uh, I'll, I'll put that there. Um, and if somebody wants me to move it to something else, just let me know, or I can, or you're more than welcome to share the screen. Um, I, I just have to come out of share. I, if I stop sharing, anyone else is allowed to jump in and share their screen as well. So I just wanted to point out before you uh, leave, Mike, that an integrated multimodal transportation network will connect strategically located parking facilities and transport hubs with downtown business and services is also in the top ranking. The number six there, yep. And I also wanted to point out number nine, which is public transit will be more convenient and available. <clears throat> I think so. My first thought looking at this is that when we, apologies if you can hear my small child yelling in the background, um, you get it. Most of you also have small children. Um, maybe I shouldn't talk right now. Um, I, my first thought is looking at these that there are a few that are the, the top priorities really relate to transportation, and then a few of the lower ones are, I think, things that we'll be addressing in other chapters. Um, more so, like that line 14 more housing and commercial development in downtown. That's something that we're, we're certainly talking about with the housing chapter. I mean, I think some of the overlap with energy. So it feels to me like those those top few are really the, the priorities and really should be the, the focus for us. May I respond to that? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so the reason that that's in there is because as um, <clears throat> transportation options are made available, that um, reduce the number of cars downtown. Parking is reduced downtown, potentially, which allows for more a different land use for that parking uh, area, potentially as housing, which becomes a win-win because it changes the transportation for those housed people, and it changes the energy cost for those housed people. So there's a way in which these are all integrated and it's challenging for you because you have certain silos of energy and housing, which are separate, but we just wanted to point out, um, you know, as the authors that they're very much uh, married together and, and intertwined. So I think what Stephanie was pointing out, and, and you guys should be aware of this, is that one of our roles in this is to make sure that there's not redundancies between the chapters. So there'll be times in which we move stuff where it's so that it's not repeated across chapters. So something like that's probably going to end up in the housing chapter. There's synergies and, and, and you know, um, overlapping throughout the entire plan. And so it's not like we're not acknowledging that there's an overlap. It's just that uh, we're trying to, you know, minimize how huge this thing is and make it more digestible. So that's just what we plan to do. Yeah, thanks. For, I think the, the intent is also to say, not, not to say that that's not important and it shouldn't be removed, but if there's a strategy or a goal that really is in the housing chapter, we can still say this is also really important for transportation. So we're going to, I think the intent is to set it up in a way where we're noting those areas of crossover, but instead, but instead of being duplicative, we're just making sure that things are consistent. And if it relates to a couple of different chapters, then we'll note that. So it's really a, a way to try and prevent it from being siloed in that way. And, and yeah, within that too, that in other chapters, we've used that opportunity to refer to um, a, a chapter where it would be fully described or, or covered. Um, so it might be that within the transportation plan um, that there might be a reference that says, you know, that, that we support the housing um, goal to um, increase 
um, more housing development in downtown Montpelier, rather than for you as a um, um, as a transportation plan to try and come up with strategies that would be tied into that. You could offer your support to um, that goal within the housing. Does that make sense? Yeah, the tape. Yeah, the table, the table that we're looking at right here are the goals. So you'll probably have goals. Um, what you're talking about, Barb, is that's where we define the strategy. So in a few other chapters, we did go through and say, um, uh, for example, in the housing chapter, we wanted to have neighborhoods that were walkable and bikeable to the downtown. Um, and so they referenced that um, uh, in order to accomplish this, the housing chapter supports the transportations. The, the, the strategy is that they support the transportation plans to have complete streets. You know, it's, it's more better, more elegantly written than that, but pretty much there's the, that's a strategy. So I think we would still have these in as goals because to have a transportation system that's walkable and bikeable, you need to have the density. And you need to have density that's going to support that mode of, of transportation because um, clearly people could, you know, in some of these suburban count, towns across the country could go through and say they want to be walkable and bikeable, but realistically they couldn't be because you'd have to walk for miles to get anywhere um, because the density is, is so, so low density that even if you built sidewalks, there's not going to be a demand. Um, so you're kind of balancing. You would have a goal. Um, for example, to, to have those higher density neighborhoods within the transportation plane, because that's going to support a walkable and bikeable community. But probably the strategy to implement that is to support the the housing chapter um, and those types of things. And I'm, I'm not sure specifically in this case if that's in there, but it probably would be. Yeah, I guess um, in reference to that particular one, if we're talking about line 14 for housing and commercial development in downtown Montpelier, that's one where I see that actually would have to tie into some kind of a discussion of reducing parking since we don't just don't have the available land. Um, so I guess, yeah, I guess that's sort of where it seems like um, this plan could be developed further in looking at, you know, once we do all these things, which are all great to do, um, it, and we end up with the result, hopefully we end up with the result that there are reduced vehicles and reduced parking. But without a specific goal to get there, I'm not certain that that would be clear. So, so that I'm so that I'm clear here. Um, uh, what was what was the the thought that went into ranking these? I mean, are we thinking of eliminating some of them, or um, uh, so no, right? So, um, yeah. I, I, I mean, I can speak towards the methodology of how we got here. So, um, we had a whole bunch of goals and strategies, and uh, each member was allotted ten points that they could allot anywhere. So they could put all ten points in one one strategy or they could spread them around as, as, as they saw fit, uh, essentially just to get us a prior, priority of what we thought uh, needed to get done first, essentially what's the most important to the committee. So just because something doesn't have uh, any votes doesn't mean it's not important to someone. And actually we allowed negative votes too. So people that were actually against things, since we did have um, a lot of opinions on both sides, people could actually put negative votes in. So we actually did have a few um, negative votes uh, as well that canceled out some positive votes. So. Um, you know, it was all about making sure that everyone's voice was kind of heard to see what was most important to people. Um, not that the things that got less votes are not important. Uh, and the idea was about, you know, not having these goals because we really couldn't agree upon um, what exactly we wanted to set those goals as. We all agreed that you shouldn't need a car to get around Montpelier. Uh, and we all agree that that's going to decrease demand for parking. Uh, but by how much we really couldn't agree upon that. It's like what Mike was saying is do we want to be a car free city or just an electric car city? And some of us would uh, prefer no cars, like let's say in the downtown, where some people thought that was uh, a step too far. So that's why we, we really couldn't get to those, those goals and saying, you know, reducing parking by 50% or whatever metrics that we wanted to come up with. 
Uh, but like Elizabeth mentioned earlier, you know, we, we still want to have uh, parking facilities, whether it's satellite parking or some sort of other um, off street parking, we were thinking that uh, part of the discussion was if we prioritize um, non vehicle infrastructure, which was a big part of our discussions. Uh, so for example, more bike lanes, more sidewalks, having it, you know, safer for non uh, non car traffic, um, that would lead into these changes of, of, of land use, whether that's more housing, commercial space, or recreational space within the rights of way. Um, we thought that would be something that comes further down and other committees and other uh, areas could speak to that. And that's why we do have references to, let's say the energy plan or the housing plan within our, our, our chapter, because we, we understand that that's gonna come from other places. So does that kind of help explain how we got here? Yeah, I think the focus on um, on what we do want is really helpful, and um, I think you know, as opposed to focusing on you know, how many parking spaces that you know we eliminate or add, or um, you know, we could we could get rid of all the parking spaces and and we could have nobody here and nobody biking, and we won't have accomplished anything. But if we count if we count like the number of we focus instead on how many people are walking and and biking in Montpelier, and if that, you know, goes up by X numbers, I feel like that is a better measure. And we ask ourselves, like, did we meet our goals? Did we get there? And I think if we look at how many people are walking and biking in Montpelier, it's, it's a much better indicator than than how many parking spaces, because you know, parking spaces are. Reducing them or adding them, I think, is it could be a, a strategy to get to a certain place. But really, the goal, what we want, is people in our downtown, and we want them um, walking and biking and feeling safe. And we want our our, our community just to be a, a, um, a healthy place where you know we're recognized as, a, as one of the few places left where you can you can live without a car. And I think there's no easy way of, of necessarily uh, measuring that in a meaningful uh, way right now, but I also don't think it's very hard to set up. And that actually could be an action or a strategy that we emphasize in terms of measuring that through, we could use a number of different counters, we can use uh, Wi-Fi signals to ping uh, phones. There's like, there's probably, five or six different ways that we can get at this. And we don't have to necessarily determine what that is, but I think if we if we say measuring, you know, figuring out a, a way to measure pedestrian and bike activity uh, in our community and really putting that at the forefront uh, so that we understand our progress could be something worth considering. I think if we look at this in steps, you also could go through for, for for people who wanted to go to a to a say a a no car solution, I think the first thing we would have to do before implementing such a thing would be to create a town that you could live in without a car. I mean, uh, and and I think that's the first step. And if in if in this eight year plan we could get to a point that you could live in Montpelier without a car, that would be a huge step forward for this community because uh, I, I don't think, I think in a few places you could, I think if you, you know, if you lived on Berry Street or if, you, or if you lived very close to downtown, but I don't think this community has achieved that goal of having the ability to live here without a car. Um, it's still a necessity for so many people. Um, and then I, if we reach that goal, I think then, then, you know, the, the city can look to that next level of, of, of that if that's where the city wants to go it's that's that's the policy decision for the city council and the community and the planning commission and everyone to make you know what what our goal is but i think certainly taking taking this in steps and pieces um and and it's not always you know i i always use as an example you know sometimes you're you don't use your a direct goal. So if your goal was to reduce the number of cars in the downtown, sometimes you don't use that as your benchmark um, of what you want to achieve. Um, and, and the example I like to use is when we were in Barry City, we had 30% uh, 30, uh, 30 of the downtown storefronts were vacant. Um, we didn't use filling the storefronts as our metric. We used job creation. 
we felt if we created a certain number of jobs in the downtown, that more people um, in the downtown would help to fix that problem. So we made a goal of 500 jobs um, in the downtown and, and we did that and it did also help to balance the, um, to balance and, and to fill those vacant storefronts. So, you know, we didn't target storefronts, we targeted new jobs. And I think in the same way, um, reducing the number of cars in the downtown, you, you don't necessarily need to make that the target. You make, you know, what is it that would make that happen? Well, if we didn't need cars, people would be more likely to walk and bike if we had a community that enabled living without it. And maybe we can get three car households to two car households and two car households to one car households. And maybe those one car households will eventually give up that car if, if that cost isn't necessary anymore. What is, and I think that Mike has been very um, helpful. Uh, we, as uh, uh, the authors, Hanif and, and Steve and I had some lofty goals, which we have to question whether uh, within eight years they can be accomplished. So we have to really think about what the real targets that can be met within the next eight year period is. But I do want to underscore again that, you know, uh, due to, in our estimate, 65% of downtown is currently parking. So, you know, I, however it is addressed directly or indirectly, um, you know, as Mike is suggesting an indirect approach, it must be addressed. Um, so I just leave those two points. Uh, thanks, Elizabeth. Uh, so do we have an interest in looking at the sub goal rankings um, and strategies or should we Go ahead and hear from, let's go ahead and hear from Dayton about goals and see what the Complete Streets Committee uh, thought about their rankings. Uh, who, me? Okay, sure. Um, Work the people up. <laughs> so I don't have a lot more to add. I mean, I think what, what has been shared here is really good. It captures the majority of the Complete Streets input. Um, and you know, a lot of our discussion really was focused, and if you want to you know, slide it after, after I'm speaking into looking at these strategies or sub goals, a lot of our discussion really did focus on that. Um, and really, there's an updated sheet that I think has two more counts. I think there's like six um, Complete Streets members voting on this one. If, uh, if yeah, six of us, so there's only two additional counts that I really have as new information. So take what you have, and I think it, it captures the majority of it. Um, and myself and Mike could provide you an update with the additional two. The key, you know, the key here that our top goals were maintaining what we have. So maintaining our bicycle as shared use paths in good condition. Um, and I think the other one that ran, ran to the top with seven, seven of our eight votes um, identified both this maintenance goal 2.1 um, and sub goal oh, 1.2 adopt policy that CIP includes pedestrian and bike projects. It's, it's written as equal footing, um, but I think that's really important so that the more, that basically these projects to improve and develop our walking, biking infrastructure don't get relegated down to the bottom. I mean, if we're really taking this on a complete streets approach, they should be, be looked at in equal footing and written into the CIP one way or another. So I think those are our top two um, when we have the, the greater buy-in of, of our committee. Um, is that useful? I mean, that's kind of what, that's, those were, I'm just reading the top two. I can get in further, but again, I think you have a lot of that summarized in your MTech Complete Street spreadsheets that we were just looking at. Yeah, that helps. Uh, do you want to circle back and talk about the goals at all? Uh, was there anything that uh, you think is worth pointing out? Um, I can. I mean, to be honest with you, we on the Complete Streets Committee, let me look at this quickly. We didn't provide, we did not provide direct goal, direct votes on goals. So answer is no. <laughs> um, we, we mostly looked at these sub goals and we're providing ranking on them. And that was just a little bit of the direction we received um, from, from Hanif when we were talking. And I, 
I, I'm not gonna take your time right now giving you my first blush looking at them. I think what people are saying in this room sounds intelligent enough that I don't wanna cloud, cloud the waters right now. I mean, I have opinions, but we can, we can take those offline when we're not all on a planning mission meeting. Uh, Barb, do you have something? Yeah, um, it does seem in, in one of the other goals or perhaps strategies that it actually talks about putting pedestrians and biking first before before streets. So I think that's kind of, that could potentially be in a pretty important goal um, rather than just saying it should be considered an addition to streets for the CIP that in fact it, it should actually have priority. Did there seem to be um, a consensus in the group about that? We, we like the equal footing. I think we liked the language there that said put it on equal footing because if you're really putting, you know, you think about the funding that goes into, you know, repaving a portion of Route 2 just here in town. Um, and if you put transportation projects for bike ped on that same footing, I think we're we're in a really strong position to be not just maintaining a sidewalk here or there, but you know, building better infrastructure throughout. It's almost impossible to prioritize cars more than we already have. Uh, so a, that would be a pretty strong, uh, strong accomplishment if we got on par there. Yeah, precisely. And that's my, that's our feeling is that if we can climb to that rank, it's a, it's a big step up. So, um, uh, do we <laughs> try trying to get trying to bring this down to a more of a practical level? I mean, we've talked. Uh, I feel like we've talked on the philosophical level quite a bit here, um, which is great. Um, is there anything in the plan that's a that's a concrete vision for moving toward this? So, like, so in other words, do we have strategies? I mean, do we like do we have in here? X amount of bike paths, or do we have specific locations? Do we have like ways to prioritize pedestrian and bike traffic, for instance? Uh, like like specific things. I want to take it um, piece by piece. Uh, you know, as far as bike paths, one of the biggest things that was identified is the need for more north south uh, bike uh, connectivity. Uh, you know, as far as pedestrian uh, sidewalks, um, there was a desire for, uh, you know, the clearing to be on par with streets and uh, to improve, uh, you know, sidewalk uh, quality and to add sidewalks in key locations. Uh, you know, and then there was the whole multimodal concept. Uh, which is includes the uh, now now termed my ride, uh, you know, and being able to establish um, some places, for instance, on State Street. It's not that my ride could stop anywhere on State Street, but that there would be some little cutouts that would be, you know, almost like a bus stop that where um, a um, a vehicle could pull in, be it a bus or van. That's a um, <clears throat> Uh, basically a public transit and or taxi um, and so that the streets start to get organized so that they are promoting um, you know uh, that service and then the integration of walking and biking and um, and my ride uh, so that people can for instance uh, walk to the co-op and take my ride with their groceries home or you know something like that um, or, or bike to the co-op and, and uh, take their groceries in, in the vehicle and put their bike on the outside of the vehicle. So all these more integrated things are conceptually, but you know, we have to do the um, little steps to build the shelters, uh, for instance. So I will stop there. Right. And I'd just like to add, there are strategies uh, within the document that we sent below all the sub goals. So, for example, all the ones that uh, Elizabeth just mentioned were are some of them, or um, even things just as simple as maintaining or um, 
our snow clearing and fixing potholes. So like one of the uh, one of the big complaints we get is like, you know, they fix the potholes in the regular cars right away, but then there's a pothole where the bike lane is and that doesn't get fixed at the same time. You know, so simple strategies like that are also included in there on top of, you know, the, the big ticket uh, items as well. So um, if you go through the strategies line by line, you can see some, some specifics of what we discussed. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing that now. I mean, partially the reason why I was asking the question uh, was to gauge how much your groups thought that, uh, you know, how do you feel about if, if we go, if we went farther uh, with some of the strategies, if we did, if, if there was interest for the planning commission to put in some concrete ideas, like there's been a proposal recently to turn some streets into one-way streets so that we can put in bike paths, um, things like that. Like, and I'm also asking the planning commissioner as well, like, I mean, do we, do we have a stomach to explore those things? Is that something for our own planning commission working group to explore as well? I just, I just want to know what people's thoughts about having some more, I mean, I, I see that there are a lot of strategies, so please don't take anything I'm saying like as any kind of judgment or anything, because it's, this, this is wonderful. So I don't want that to get lost, but, uh, but yeah, I'm just wondering if, if what people's interests are in taking the strategies even, even farther into things. I think there may be ways to to push them, and, and one things one things that I liked in this was if I'm reading it right. Um, just I'm going to read this A14, um, which is calling out specifically the downtown master plan and the um, Barry Main Street scoping studies. Those are two really good planning documents that I think this you know kind of higher level document. Some of its role is to point directly to those and say dig further, like implement those plans, because we don't need to plan and plan and plan again three times. Those plans have really good efforts that the city's already invested in um, and can go further. So I think the more that um, we can stand on the shoulders of other good work and just make this a tool to implement that work, um, I think that's an excellent way. And there may be a, a good way to pick one of those plans um, recommendations and just write a strategy that directly supports it. You're muted, Kirby. Pasatinos, then Bard. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to build on that. Like that's where we pointed to other plans, for example, like Montpelier in Motion, where it already lists sidewalk gaps or areas that uh, have already been uh, studied and are known to be problematic in some way or another. And that's why we point specifically to Montpelier in Motion and Complete Streets and all the other studies that we've had over the past few years to implement those as part of our strategies. But also, um, like I said at the beginning, this, this document is kind of a compromise. Uh, during our discussion, we did have a lot of uh, very detailed discussion on strategies at our MTIC meetings, and uh, not all of them actually made it into this document. So I'm sure uh, many members would welcome additional ones being put in. And again, we've uh, at the committee, we've all said, you know, there's other areas for public input. So when these things do come to the city council, when this is being finalized, the people that may or may not have agreed with the different strategies that didn't make into the final uh, version will always have, again, an opportunity to, to voice their opinions again on that. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a really good point to to continually call out the other plans that have already been done, um, as as you said, Dayton, because too often we have plans that sit on the shelf and don't really get the attention that they need. So um, the more we can integrate those plan references and the and what the plans are asking us to do in each case, then I think it. Uh, it strengthens both the plans that have already been done and the chapter itself. So um, I guess, but it is it is pretty important to ask the planning commission for the transportation subgroup, uh, transportation subcommittee, um, are you willing to take on more as Kirby indicated? So in other words, do you do you feel like do you feel like it would be helpful to try to flesh out in greater detail? I, I totally the point is very well taken about reference to the plans that already exist that do go into detail. So if you feel like, yeah, if you feel like I don't know if if it puts those things on a back burner or something, I mean, uh, is that a concern you have? Like if we were to flesh out, if we were like. Would, would there be any harm in us fleshing out more strategies? I mean, it's just, yeah, just let us know what you think about that. Are you asking this of MTIC or of your subcommittee? Of, of, of MTIC. Um, Barb, Barb's on the subcommittee, so she's, okay. she's 
she's just curious to know, yeah about what she should be doing yeah i i wanted to just say um just throw one other thing in and i know it's out of order for what you're asking um i think that um when we're talking about multimodal uh marketing uh how we market transportation in montpelier is hugely important how we have integrated um, information through Montpelier Alive and or the city website, uh, which explains, uh, you know, where this parking might be and how you get in between places and what the options are, uh, you know, to integrate with trip planners that exist. These are hugely important things. But let me go back to, um, there are uh, a number of, um, you know, strategies that are well, there are a number of um, actions that can be taken and described as strategies that are buried in the plans that are referenced. And, um, you know, I think that, um, I know that Hanif and I would be happy to go through, potentially, Constantinos, I don't need to volunteer you, but to go through, and I'm sure Dayton would ha be happy to join us on that too, uh, look at what the key elements are um, I think that um, Mike already knows what they are, being familiar with all of them. Uh, and uh, uh, so it's always nice to have a little one. Uh, you know, I, I think that that's work that we would be happy to take on and help the um, Planning Commission, Transportation and Subcommittee with uh, to identify key um, strategies. Okay, yeah. That that's helpful. And if I know Barb, she probably will be in contact with you. Um, so, uh, so that's good. Uh, okay. Was, were there any more thoughts about, about that? I thought Dayton had some thoughts, but I think he was just waving to a baby. Uh, <laughs> all both those things are true at all times. Uh, no, I think I just, encourage simplicity, I, I encourage review to remove redundancy as much as possible. We always got to think about our plans, not as do they say everything that they could possibly say, but is can we, can the person holding this plan in their hands in the Montpelier city office, pick it up and act on it and make some good change over the next eight years, right? So I'm happy to help in any way. Look at, look and look at that and, and help, help move that forward. I think that's part of what I'm thinking about. When I, when I was asking that question, that's part of what I was thinking about was, uh, I mean, if there's certain things that that we really believe need to, to be high priorities of concrete things, like if it's closing down some streets or putting in bypass in certain locations or things, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think it would be, I think it would, I don't know if pressure is the right word, but it would be a good incentive to decision makers to actually do those things over the next eight years if they're right in there. Uh, so that, that's kind of part of what my thinking was in asking about the strategies. Well, I think implementing the strategies breaks into a couple of, of boxes. Let's all try to remember that. So we've got our projects box and we've got our programs box. And the projects box are those big things. So when we talked about implementing the downtown master plan, that's a big project. Um, and, and so um, we would look at that. The north-south connector is a project that we don't have that planned yet. So there's an idea that we should be, that, that should be the next big plan. We've got to, how, how are we going to make that north-south connector? And then how are we going to get that in the, into the project phase? Um, then from the, from the program standpoint, the big one that, um, you know, we had to do some, some education for the, the transportation committee on was really your CIP, your capital improvement program is is your main driver that is the one that the that the transportation committee needs to be involved in because that's where when we talk about having a priority of putting bike and ped on the same footing as roads what you're talking about is having a priority of how you're going to write your capital improvement program you know when we drop a million dollars into your cip for next year how we spend those million dollars um that's that's where the rubber is going to hit the road and that's where we've got to be making those incremental, those smaller improvements. So how we implement the complete streets plan and how we fix the gap analysis that the Montpelier in motion is really a gap analysis of where are there are gaps in our, our bike and our ped systems um, and where are the pieces that have to get fixed. That's all really going to get implemented in your CIP. So we really need to be making sure that um, we have active partners who are, 
who are participating in that process. And then there are a number of lots of these other little, you know, how do we, what are regulations? Well, regulations are really only going to apply to um, individual projects. Um, you know, so if you were building a new street, if you were building a new, um, you know, sphere subdivision regulations, we probably don't have a lot in there of, of regulations other than, you know, speed and uh, speed limits, which periodically come up. Um, I think there's a, a, rec a recommendation, which, you know, I'm, I'm kind of in support of, of, of lowering the speed limit in the downtown. And I think that certainly goes hand in hand with the fact that the, the downtown master plan did not, or at least as, as it was um, written, does not create bike lanes. Um, the option was to dedicate more space to pedestrians, um, keep the keep some of the on-street parking, but not put in the bike lanes. And I think if that's your solution, then we need to lower the speed limits. And, and I would agree with that. I was rather surprised we didn't get the bike lanes, but um, that's a different conversation for a different plan. Um, but I think as, as you start thinking about the big boxes, we, we don't have to necessarily put in this plan every nut and bolt that we want, but we got to make sure we capture what are the big things in the CIP and the projects buckets, the regulations buckets, and what are those plans, additional plans that we need to do. Um, and then the other one that did make a big difference when if we're talking about the big umbrella things were the policies and policies affect how we spend our money and how we allocate our land. And I think that became a big thing when we started talking about um, how do we do these uh, shared mobility? And a lot of shared mobility came down to, we may have to give up parking spaces in our parking lots for a ride share, or we may have to give up on-street parking spaces for a pull-off for, um, for the, the, the mobility. Um, and so those were the things that kind of come in um, from a policy standpoint that, that is simply an act of city, of city council. City council can simply go through as they have in the past to simply make a motion that says we're going to allocate two parking spaces for um, the ride share. And so I think remembering we're talking at a, at a certain level, we don't necessarily have to have in the plan, we should build the, the sidewalk on East State Street. I don't think we have to get that detailed, but I think we do have to go through and reference those plans and say how we're going to get them get them in. Otherwise, the strategies in this plan will get too long, but um, make sure we hit all those important ones, um, which they, they, they uh, think transportation committee really got into the good details, making sure line striping program is, is, is maintained and improved. Street sweeping is maintained and improved. Um, sidewalk clearing um, and snow clearing was, was definitely highlighted as something that just needed improvement. It did forget about maintaining it. It isn't being done well enough as we are right now. And if we want to be encouraging safe and efficient bike and pedestrian, we really need to do a better job of, you know, getting those six inch deep puddles out of our crosswalks, which seem to be at every crosswalk. So um, I guess I'll, I'll leave those comments at that, that we're kind of talking the, these higher little bit of higher elevation of what we're looking at. Okay. Do we, uh, do we, have, do we have any of the planning commissioners who want to talk about any of the things we've discussed or something new? I want to make sure that everyone has a chance. John, do you have something? I guess I was going to ask, so we have to submit essentially, you know, our, our street typologies along with our plan and we have like the downtown master plan and, and a few of those things already done and I'm curious if we just have those and if we can just publish them as web services and I could, I could help. Uh, but once we have that map, if we annotate it um, with what's um, highlighting, you know, what's going to be different in eight years specifically. So I think it's, I think we should really put on there what, um, what are we going to, what are we going to change and, and maybe prioritize it. Who are you thinking of, uh, um, of doing that with. I just, I guess I just need, I don't know if it was like SE group or who has, 
who did our um, master plan and whatever other road typology data we have, but wouldn't wouldn't be hard to do, assuming they have. Yeah, they I think, I think road typology was done by Alta. We can get that one. Um, that was the complete streets plan, and SE Group did the downtown master plan. So just just so the planning commission understands, the the street typology looked at everything except for the downtown, and really wanted to look at from a complete street standpoint whether you were up on Town Hill and wanted to walk down, how would you be able to walk safely from you know anywhere down here? If you wanted to bike, is there a safe safe bike route? So every street would be given a typology where you would address how each mode of transportation would be handled. And there's, you know, seven or eight street types and they were applied to all the towns, except in the downtown because down, these downtown streets are just too complex and they really have to be master planned. There's, you just can't drop in a street typology for state Maine. So we did a second project to do Barry, a part of Barry state in Maine and did a master planning effort on that to go through and say, okay, we've got a limited amount of landscape. How can we um, design this to meet our goals? Um, so these these two are really meant to, to complement each other. So the two plans are, are meant to work together, um, but they're done differently. The, the One is a street typology and the other one is a master plan, but they're really meant to connect to each other. And I think Montpelier in motion is, is forgotten a lot because that actually has priorities already in it. It says, you know, these are high, medium, and low uh, areas that need to be addressed in some way, whether it's a sidewalk gap or bike lanes or, or some, some other sort of um, thing that needs to be remediated. Yeah, I kind of wish we had done the Montpelier in motion after we did the street typology because then it really could have been a gap analysis of the street typology to go through and say, all right, where are the gaps in our complete street system. You know, where do we need a bike lane? Where do we need, but instead we kind of did them in reverse. Um, they still work and they still work together, but I think it's it's an imperfect match. But um, what the Montpelier in Motion plan did identify were those biggest, um, most critical gaps, especially in the sidewalks, um, especially in the pedestrian system. It really highlighted those areas. As, you know, I, I can use East State as an example everybody knows, you know. If you wanted to walk up to a VCFA, you can't just walk up one side of the street. You can't, you've got to walk up and cross over because there are sidewalks that gap and disappear on you. So, The other one I want to make people aware of is going up Berlin Street up towards Sherwood Drive where there's child care. And there are many people who have to walk along the side of the road with their strollers to get to Sherwood Drive. And it's just unsafe. So I just point that out as something which would go uh, hopefully on an integrated map that John's referring to. Yeah, that was actually one of the surprises that came out of the, the, the complete streets plan was as we mapped things out, we've said, you know, Sherwood Drive, you know, it never would have crossed my mind, but that that should have a sidewalk on it, at least one sidewalk on the side based on its, its classification, its use and its traffic. And then once, you know, you know, you know, the nerds behind the computers figured that out. Then when we started asking people, everybody was like, well, heck yeah, that's, that's, that's been a problem for a while. We just, just we didn't know about it um, because we never asked about it. And Sherwood Drive just never came across as an obvious connector, but it is a very important connector that, that should have a sidewalk. And it actually got built into the CIP. I think it's, it's on the, it's in the plans to go and build that sidewalk. Um, and a lot of it comes back down to it having been identified in the complete streets plan. Mike, where, where would we find past or current CIP plans? Um, are they on the website, on the city website? I'm just thinking about, you know, as, as we look at this plan, you know, we don't want to be redundant. Um, and if some things are already planned, like that sidewalk, um, it would be good to know. Yeah, I, I actually don't know where the easiest place is to get it. The CIP, it should be in the town report. The, the city report. Um, but 
I don't know. I don't know if it actually is published in there or on the website. It would be it'd have to take a little bit of looking. I I didn't I haven't taken a look at it. I do know the CIP committee is starting to meet now. We were just talking before the meeting about the fact that the budgets are starting to be worked on. Well, the CIP is part of the budget. It is uh it's 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 its own budget. So um, and I I'm pretty sure that the CIP committee has started to reach out to to folks um, about that. Or at least the transportation committee. Well, that yeah, it'd be great if you could find out where we could access that. Um, All right, if I can find la either last year's or the draft, I'll email that out. Because it, there could be some things on on previous plans that have not necessarily been done yet, right? Oh, certainly this year. I mean, this year a lot of stuff no, in the CFP got cut, but uh, yeah. Yeah, Before there's, there's probably number of projects, and, and the idea is also, you know, the CIP, um, I guess we could have a little bit of a, a two-minute primer on, on capital improvement plans um, for people who don't know. They're usually five-year, seven-year, sometimes 11-year plans of capital improvements, and the idea is to lay out over time what are all the projects that need to get work done so we can make sure we're setting aside money um, we don't just decide what we're going to do next year when we do the CIP. We, it's, it's actually a plan that extends out for either seven, eight, nine years um, and, and lays out all the roads. We're going to build, we're going to repave these roads, we're going to reconstruct these roads, we're going to rebuild these bridges, we're going to do these retaining walls. And each of the years and what the estimated cost is. Um, and so one of the purposes of getting involved in every year and working on these is to make sure that um, say for example we wanted to to add a sidewalk on a certain street and it was going to need a retaining wall well we might have to look at that six years out to start a process that goes through and says next year or the you know we should start working on the right-of-way acquisition for that so that way we could you know start getting that done in time if we want to build this because you can't just go in and say well next year we want to build a sidewalk in east state if it means we also need to require the purchase of an of property and the construction of a retaining wall before we can build that um, so you really have to be thinking five six seven years out because some of these projects take a number of years um, to to build into because they, they have multiple steps it's not you know some of them are easy some of them are a matter of looking at this and saying, hey, look, you're repaving um, Town Hill. I don't know when that's getting done, but let's say we're repaving Town Hill. Um, you already own the right of way. We should widen this road and put in the bike lanes. Um, you know, let's add in the extra dollars. Or when we re-line stripe it, let's repave it and re-line stripe it and make the lanes a little bit smaller so that way we've got more room for the bike lanes. Um, and those, those are the, the questions that that you know that's where that prioritizing comes up um, and if we're missing if we're reconstructing a street that's usually when we start talking about you know um, Sherwood Drive should have a sidewalk on it well you know it probably makes sense that we talk about putting that sidewalk in if we're reconstructing that street um, so that that I think that's where it's it's really a much larger it's an 11 year plan that really looks out at a number of projects um, over time so that way you can start to go through and say um you know I, i'm looking at this six-year plan and all i see are roads 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 where are my sidewalks um and i think that's that's where the policy side pushes in and the politics side pushes in to go through and say you know we, we want to see equal footing our policy is equal footing and we're not seeing equal footing we're going to take this to city council or we're going to take this to the to, to the letters to the editor or whatever the the push is to go through and say, hey, our it's in our city plan that we were going to put this on equal footing, and we're not following our plan. And I think that's that's how this this document gets a little bit more legs under it. Um, but again, it's the key is knowing your 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 power is in the CIP committee. That's where you're going to get work done, um, either the CIP committee or doing big projects. Um, you know, and we're probably not doing big projects anytime in the near future. So let's start thinking about what, what can we get done in these smaller steps? Um, you know, what sidewalks can we get fixed for a couple thousand bucks? Um, 
you know, and then look, start looking those three and five years out, start going and making sure that that plan for five years um, for East State fixes that sidewalk problem that we talked about. Okay, uh, maybe we should, we've got 30 minutes left. Unless someone has slightly more substance or policy, policy stuff to talk about, we can formulate a plan for how the planning commission would like to proceed um, with the chapter. Uh, are we thinking of, um, I mean, I, I, know, I know John expressed some ideas earlier, but are we, are we thinking that we're going to just from here do nothing and kick it to our uh, subcommittee or, you know, our working group, our own working group to, to look at it and come back to us or something else. What are our thoughts? Go ahead, Mark. So maybe Kirby, it would be helpful if the subgroup just looked at the, the plan as presented right now. And uh, because there are, um, as Dayton pointed out, there are some redundancies and we could kind of, um, um, pull it together a little bit more for the planning commission and then come back to the planning commission and say, okay, where, where are the holes or where do we want to step out from this plan and include more? Uh, it might just be helpful uh, because there's a lot here, as you probably can see. And I went through it and I was just trying in my own mind to kind of put things into different buckets and, um, Anyway, I just think that there's a, a way to simplify it, as Dayton said. So we could do that first. Okay. That that's yeah. That sounds that sounds like a good idea. Uh, is there anything anything more uh, for planning? Um, Elizabeth, did you have something? I'm not on the planning commission, but I just thought that. Um, so what I'm hearing is that in Barb's um, uh, uh, review of the plan which includes all of the references to complete, complete street, uh, you know, um, Montpelier in motion, uh, you know, conjugate away here and the CIP that, 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 that um, hopefully there would be um, a review of that and we would be ha happy, MTIC, um, complete streets, et cetera, to help with that review. Uh, so that uh, there's a more comprehensive knowledge and also looking at the, um, the previous plan, which, uh, you know, we're building upon now, uh, we'll give a more comprehensive view. So we're happy to help in that process. Uh, well, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for the offer. Um, so yeah, and yeah, so you guys can connect offline and, and organize that. Um, so yeah, it's just just so that the other people who aren't planning commission members know, uh, we've created some sub working groups uh, to help us go through certain um, chapters, just, just what we consider the really big chapters. I think that we have about five working groups right now. Uh, and so transportation is one of them. Um, so it's Barb and Aaron, who's not here tonight, and um, Ariane, I believe, uh, who is here. Um, are the members of that particular working group and uh so so they're 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 doing some of the legwork for the planning commission so we've, we've done this basically so we can get more work in so that we're so that we are working other than just twice a month uh so so they'll be working on that on the side does anybody else want to though make sure that we act on something in the meantime um like for instance i don't want to leave what john said earlier about coordinating um, some maps or something. I don't want to leave that just, you know, it like, should, should we do something for momentum on that, John? I guess, um, so we've got the Montpelier motion, the, the Alta and the, the um, SE group plans. Mike, I don't know if you'd be willing to, uh, you can even just give me their contact info, but we can just ask to see if we can get the, whatever files we can and then put them all up in one place. Um, I, I can't remember, it's been a while since I looked at the Montpelier in motion, but I can't remember 
what the um, mapping or data component of that was. Um, that was Jim Donovan, so I don't think that would be hard to get. So you're 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 not thinking the PDFs; you're thinking the 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 data files that went behind the generation of that those maps in there. Right. Whatever made those PDFs. If we could grab that, and then we could just put them all together in one interactive place. Yeah, I don't know if I have those, but I could. We could. I, the, the contacts of everybody are still here. I just have to get you the Alta contacts. So, um, this Jim Arcane at SE and someone at Alta. Yeah, yeah, I think it was Alta. I think it was there. You know, I'm trying to remember if they were out of Albany or if they were out of New Hampshire. Out of, out of everywhere. Uh, yeah, Alta's everywhere. I was just trying to remember which guy. I'd have to get you the Alta contact. But uh, the other one, Jim Donovan, obviously, you know, and, um, and SE group is pretty easy to find. Um, so yeah, we, we just have to reach out to Alta. Okay. That sounds good. Um, okay. Do we, am I, am I forgetting anything else or are we, are we good? We know what we're going to be doing in the short term for this chapter. Just invite me to the subcommittee group. I know I haven't been participating in the other subcommittees, but in this case, I think uh, I should probably participate for a little bit because I, I unlike the other chapters where the, the they would finish up, I would usually go through and polish up the plans to make sure that it met our format. The transportation plan, I didn't. I really wanted to let you guys see what they came up with before I started to, to, to adjust it um, to meet our format. So. If the transportation subcommittee is going to do some tweaking to meet the format, I'd just like to make sure I'm there to, to, to guide that process a little bit. Yeah, I, yeah I, I, sure. I, we could do that. Um, I think, um, you know, we may, may have one step before that, but if you want to be involved in whatever preliminary steps we get in, into, Mike, that's fine. When, we'll set up the committee meeting soon now that we've had a review by the Planning Commission. Uh, do we have any planning commissioners who actually want to give some feedback to Barb and um, carry on before they start working on the working group? Uh -huh. um, Kirby? Yeah. I was just going to say um, a while ago, I don't know how long ago, but a while ago we had looked at this um, before we had heard from folks from any of the groups that worked on the plan and we had talked about adding or potentially finding more space for some inclusive language about um, ability and mobility, different abilities. Um, so I guess I would just ask if you give an eye to that as you go through. That'd be cool. Thanks. That's a great point. Thank you for reminding us. Yeah, there, there is a mention um, in it about people with different mobility issues um, and also different um, financial situations in terms of the uh, public transit, making sure that everyone has equal access. Um, so yeah, we'll definitely um, keep those um, in anything we would do. Anyone else have anything to pass along to the working group? Okay. Okay, well, uh, I think that's, that's pretty good. That's a lot to think about. I think this was a good uh, discussion. One of these, a good meeting to, I don't know, I know, I'll, I, know I have a lot to think about. Uh, so, so thank you for everyone. Um, thank you to, uh, Tinos and Dayton and Elizabeth for coming in. We really appreciate your feedback. Thank you for uh, allowing us to participate. We really appreciate it. You're here. Everyone's always here if you have any further questions. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, uh, I mean, 
you know, you're, you're the ones who did, did the real work here. Uh, so we really appreciate that. And I hope that as this progresses, we remember to tell city council about how <laughs> much contribution the subcommittee's made. I hope we remember to do that because it's, it's been huge. Um, it's, you know, it's not, it's not the planning commission's plan. It's really the subcommittee's plan that we work on a little bit. Uh, so that's great. Uh, well, do you guys have anything else to add before we adjourn? Okay, then. Uh, with that, uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn. I'll second. Okay. Uh, motion by Barb, second by Stephanie. I'll, uh, in favor of adjourning for the night, say aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? Okay, so our meeting is over. Thanks again, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.